So my first question is, when you began writing, what first brought you to it? Well, you know, I often think about these little readers that I had um, when I was perhaps third grade through fifth grade. We had these this section of the room where uh, there was a box full of stories that we had to read. And if we had free time after finishing our lessons, we were supposed to go over there and read and answer the questions, which were about um, inference and tested our learning, our reading comprehension. I remember one day reading a story about a man in a very frozen landscape. I don't remember where it was, but he was trapped in the snow and for a long time, you know, near death, and finally, um, finally, one of those St. Bernards that has the barrels around its neck came to save him. And when he opened the barrel, inside he found um, a little container of brandy and a bar of dark chocolate. Now, I had, of course, had chocolate, perhaps none as dark as that and, and sweet as that, but I'd never had brandy. But the way that the writer described the warmth and the taste of the brandy and the chocolate to this man who'd been out in the snow for days was so vivid and so evocative. I thought, words can do that. Words can make you experience it as if you're drinking the brandy and eating the chocolate. I thought, I want to do that. And my next question, um, do you have a method when it comes to writing? And also, what are some of your favorite well, um, you know, I, I take my influences all from so many different places. Um, most recently, when I was working on Native Guard, I read uh, some Irish poets whose work was really important to me, Seamus Heaney and Ivan Boland, often for the way that um, those writers dealt with history and a sense of place. Um, a connection to place, a sense of exile from a place. The last poem in my native guard, South, owes a great debt of gratitude to Seamus Heaney's North. It was his poem that helped me figure out something about my own relationship to that landscape. And what do you enjoy most about being a poet? Is it giving the readings and touring? Is it just the writing? Is it? The writing? Is it the it's the making professor? of those poems. Um, I am happiest and feel most like myself when I am making a poem. And in your poetry, uh, your poetry is heavily influenced by history, both personal and lesser known narratives. Mm -hmm. Why do you use a lot, utilize this in your poetry? Well, I think I have always been interested in absences and gaps in the historical record, gaps in the family narrative. Um, so it seems to me that for a long time my whole project, my whole goal has been to try to fill in the things that have been left out. I think it's a way of trying to know the world, trying to know more about the world and um, to be in love with it in such a way that I want to aggregate as much as I can of the stories that have been forgotten with the stories that we know so that we have a fuller, fuller version of our history. And some of your poems are emotional and personal. As a writer, what does it take to get to that point? Oh, I think um, serious writing involves a great deal of honesty, a willingness to examine the self and difficult things, to grapple with some of the hardest things that we're given as human beings. Um, I hope I'm willing to do that every time I approach a poem. And sometimes, you know, it's a struggle to, you know, push yourself to, to tell as much of the truth as you can and not try to edit it for, you know, to make yourself look better. <laughs> You know, I, um, I often quote to myself uh, a very short poem by Lucille Clifton 
recall why some people be mad at me sometimes. They ask me to remember, but they want me to remember their memories, and I keep on remembering mine. That's about that same kind of historical memory, and I think, that the memory that I'm going to have to bring is going to be different from perhaps the national or official memory we've been given. But I also remember Theodore Rutke's My Papa's Waltz. Uh, I often am walking around and will just recite it to myself. Sometimes um, Robert Hayden's Those Winter Sundays. And speaking of um, memories, what was it like to win the Pulitzer? What were the emotions and the feelings? <laughs> well, disbelief. <laughs> disbelief, disbelief, and disbelief again for quite a while. And then... Um, I, I was also thrilled, um, and I remember it physically, too. I couldn't stop shaking for a long time, and then I got a twitch in my right eye that lasted for months. Um, and what advice do you give to young poets? Well, it's the, it's the usual advice that perhaps people are tired of hearing, but... Um, it's about reading. It's about finding those writers whose work you love, um, the books that can teach you things about your own craft and your own obsessions. And I think also to fall in love with the dictionary and look up all the words, even the ones you think you know. And what are some of the books that you've fallen in love with? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, often they are novels. Um, there, there are books of poems I love, too, but... I can remember um, when I first encountered Wuthering Heights. That's just, you know, one of my favorite books. And, of course, I'm a huge fan of Toni Morrison. So um, Beloved was a really important book to me. Thomas and Beulah, Rita Dove's uh, book of poems was important. So many are. Um, but the ones that sort of changed my thinking um, were uh, Wuthering Heights and um, Faulkner's Light in August. And what can readers expect from you next? Oh, <laughs> well, um, I, readers can always expect that uh, I'm going to pour my heart out into the poems. And are you working on any new books? For you? I, I am. Okay. Working on a new collection, um, still doing a lot of research for it. Um, I'm interested in 18th century Mexican Costa paintings that um, displayed the kind of mixed blood unions that were going on in the colony and the children of those unions. And is there anything else that you'd like to add? How about thanks?